Hey y'all. Okay, so just yesterday I made my mega listen upload and I had said at the tail end of it that I didn't think I'd be providing any new content because it's pretty much a done deal. She was convicted. She's going to be sentenced to prison on April 19th. And again, I could predict probably around 20 years. And as sad as I find this case, I really don't feel there's much less to dis- left to discuss. I mean, I'll sit there saying, oh, she doesn't deserve this. And everybody else will be saying, oh, yes, she does. She's the worst of the worst. And so it's really a pointless conversation. But I did just want to say that since having it uploaded just yesterday, I have gotten a lot of comments of people that are so unrelenting in their hate of her. And I just want to say two things. One, nobody's probably even listening this far, but that's okay. And two, I'm not an advocate for Jennifer Crumbly. I mean, you don't see me starting pages about her, GoFundMe, or trying to get the sympathy vote, or any of that. I mean, that's just not something I would do, especially for somebody that I do feel has played a role in this recent school, sh- I mean, the that, oh God, the Oxford, Oxford? Is it Oxford? Yeah, I think it's called Oxford. High school shooting. Definitely definitely she could have done a million things better but I just wanted to add that I feel that y'all are being so severe in your perception of her maybe y'all are the kind of parents that never drop the ball stay with your ear to the ground on everything your child's doing and feel that this could never happen to you I personally think it could happen to anybody, but let's just say that you're right and it could never happen to you. Okay. However, wouldn't y'all agree that, excuse me, that y'all have brothers and sisters and friends and aunts and uncles and mothers and fathers and, I mean... Don't you think that at some point you might know somebody that makes a misstep like Jennifer did and somebody that thought they had their finger on the pulse of their child's activities and something horrible happens? It might not be a school shooting, hopefully, but kids get into so much trouble these days. I mean, it's not even their fault at this point because trouble is only a tap away. I mean, I remember when I was growing up, in order for people to wave their freak flag, they had to really go to the underbelly of society by going into the back of bookstores, and yes, I'm very old, (laughs) or they had to connect with really seedy people and find prostitutes on the street. I don't even think we call them prostitutes anymore. That's how old I am. But, I mean... Nowadays, for in, in Jennifer's defense, you know, getting with adult f- friend finder is a dang app on her phone. So she, you know, she wasn't really neglecting her child that much as if she were to be spending hours trying to connect with somebody to do things, you know, that y'all don't approve of. She just is hitting a tap on her phone and she's right there. So... I just think that if y'all were to be a little bit more understanding, just a little bit, y'all would be able to see your way clear of saying, okay, this woman screwed up and she screwed up big. Not so much that her screw up was big, but the result of her simple neglect and not acting when she should have acted resulted in a really big, bad result. So... I'm just saying, from the minute she woke up on that day, November 30th, I believe it was, 2021, which, by the way, in 2021, I'm just saying, there were nowhere near the amount of school shootings there are now. I actually looked at a chart, and it looks like right from the pandemic and forward, there were more school shootings than there were in the years leading up to it, 
from Columbine. So that just gives you an indicator that maybe school shootings weren't in the forefront of her thinking. But not that that's an excuse. (laughs) But anyway, so where I sit, this is what I think. I mean, y'all know what I think, but this is why I feel something for her. First of all, y'all have been so critical of her loving horses. But I don't think that y'all have really ever been around a horse. If you're able to be that judgmental about how could you love a horse more than your child. Not saying you could, but I'll say this. When you're around a horse, there is something about them that draws you in and mystifies you for the most part they are magical creatures there's something about them with their huge eyes and the way that they give off this this feeling that even if they don't have a really great personality I mean even if they're not Mr. Ed you still can just I know I've seen horses and instantly fall in love with them I'm like oh my god I love a horse you know they're just amazing creatures Amazing. And so for her to love her two horses or to have a first horse and say, I got to have another horse. I get that. It's the same thing with my cats. I love my cats. I love them. I mean, they are my heart. And I don't see it any different than a horse, except that a horse costs so much more money. But I still can understand once you've fallen in love with a horse and owning a horse and having a horse and visiting a horse you're in that horse mentality and they are on your mind a lot. And I know that to you people, that is no excuse. But what I'm saying is, I'm not talking about what horses mean to y'all. I'm talking about to try to see it from Jennifer's point of view, that she woke up that day, she was the owner of two horses that she loved. And things went really sideways really quick that day. And by the day's end, She was selling her horses, selling her house, selling her cars to, and then she had to go into hiding because she was so afraid of the mob. I mean, she was getting all these posts on Facebook about how angry everyone was. I mean, they wanted to kill her. And so she just freaked out and went into hiding and didn't even fully hide. I mean, she hadn't fleed yet. But just at the thought of her fleeing, all of a sudden, the police woke her up. Guns, AK-47s, like 12 of them pointed at her. A hundred cops on the scene. If that isn't traumatizing, I don't know what is. But it didn't stop there. Then she was brought into the prison system. And all the hate and just constant, constant. And then her son is convicted And tried as an adult, which at that time she didn't know. And he's gone. She has no son no more. He's as good as gone. And her marriage over. And her job fired. And all her money gone. And the next two years in prison, hoping against hope every day that the trial would exonerate her. And it didn't. That's gone too. And every day, those jailers coming into the courtroom with chain when I would hear the clanking of a chain I would just like oh my god oh my god it was just did something to me but wrapping chains around her as if she were Hannibal Lecter or something I mean this is surely a severe enough punishment and she's about to be sentenced and she's probably gonna do anywhere from 20 years and more How can y'all not stop for one second? That's all I'm asking for. Just a couple of seconds of reflection and saying, okay, I think she's been punished for what she did and didn't do. That is all I'm saying. And if y'all could just take a minute to reflect on that and think of a loved one of yours, a mother, sister, brother, father, uncle, nephew, niece, whatever, or just a really good friend that Fs up like that, And these are the repercussions that your friend, mother, sister, brother, father, daughter have to deal with. Would you not, wouldn't you want the public to show some compassion for your loved one and just to give them a little bit of 
a break. I mean, I'm not saying that you're supposed to fall all over Jennifer and say, you poor baby. Oh my goodness. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that maybe there's another way. And I was hoping that y'all could consider it. And that's only because of all the comments that I got that made me feel the need to respond. So thanks for listening, y'all. Bye now.